the greatest thing you'll ever find in this world is true love. A lot of people look, search for it all their life and still never find it. They go through marriage after marriage after marriage after marriage and they never find true love. Children feel unwanted and rejected and that's bad today. Children are out here sleeping on the streets, running away from home, joining up with gangs, falling for drugs. And some of these young women go out and sell themselves into prostitution when, they had, when they're addicted to drugs. And most of it is because they never knew what real love was. Love is a powerful thing, folks. I know you think it's weakness, but it's not weakness. It's a great thing. You love Him because He loved you. Here's what the Lord said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, Neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. God will not make you love him. But the more you love him is an indication of your character. It shows what you're made out of. You want to know what you're made out of? Find out your relationship with God. For it will always be based on truth. You can flim flam people, but you will not flim flam God. Psalm 91 verse 14. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. 1 John chapter 4 verse 19. We love him because he first loved us. 1 John 4 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. If anything characterizes the current situation in the world, it is an abundance of fear. People are apprehensive. They're on edge. They don't know what's going to happen next. This is a time of uncertainty. Would you agree with me this morning? And because of uncertainty, people are fearful. Do you realize the suicide rate is skyrocketing? You realize that, the, that homes now, our divorce rate is skyrocketing? Do you realize that all of these social ills are a product of the manifest spirit of this age? Uncertainty. Anytime you put people in a situation of uncertainty, you can control them. And that's exactly where people are today. They are where they can be controlled. Why? Because they want to go back to peace and comfort and safety. And that's not there yet. So they're looking to their government to give them an element of peace, security, safety. And it's not coming. So why do I love him? I love him because he's gracious. The Bible said in Exodus 33 verse 17, The Lord said to Moses, I will do this thing also, that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight. And I know thee by name. Amen. I'm so glad God knows my name. He knows my name and I know his name. What's God's name, preacher? Jesus. That's the name of God. Exodus 34 verse 4 says, And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning and went up into Sinai as the Lord had commanded him and took in his hand the two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. This is L O capital Jehovah L O R D. He proclaimed that name. It's called the ineffable name of God, the Tetragrammaton. And he gave it to Moses. He said, This is my name. In verse number six, and the Lord passed by before him, proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Have you met that God today? Do you know the one I'm talking about? You know, listen, let me tell you something. If you think you deserve something from God, you don't know what grace is. If you think you have earned something from God, you have no idea what grace is. Grace is laying yourself prostrate before God and saying, Lord, I deserve nothing from Thee, but I cry out to Thee because of who You are. Amen. Nothing will stir the soul of God more than somebody that relies on God's character. Thou the Lord, are you going to destroy the righteous with the wicked? Abraham said, can this happen in Sodom? Shall not the judge of the whole earth do right? He will. How many believe he'll do right? He will. I love him because he's faithful. Isaiah 49 verse 7 says, Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, to him whom man despiseth, to him whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes also shall worship. 
because of the Lord that is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, and He shall choose thee. What does that mean, Holy One of Israel? Preach it means that it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, that He has no part, no being whatsoever with the gods of Moab or the gods of Ammon or the gods of the Philistines or the Phoenicians. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Just the other day, a mob gathered into a restaurant and they looked into the face of a woman sitting at a table and said, Are you a Christian? And they said it the way I just said it. They screamed into her face. Are you a Christian? They said to her. And we live in a time when everybody worries about being offended. You're afraid if you say something, you offend somebody. It didn't bother them. They screamed into her face, Are you a Christian with venom? And that, of course, uh, was only taking a break from the vile, uh, uh, the vile talk that comes out of their mouth. And then the other day, it wasn't too long ago, that a mob, the same mob, gathered together and they piled a heap of Bibles up and they lit them and they burned Bibles. They burned the Word of God. Listen, my dear friend, you have to be dumb, 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 dumb not to get the message. Are you getting the message? Are you getting the message? Are you hearing what's going on? He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. He got eyes to see, look. And this bunch of politicians today are telling you this. Don't believe those lying eyes. You'd better believe them. We're living in dangerous times. Something is happening right before your eyes. Hard to take a hold of it sometimes because it is so far into everything that you know. I'm not saying everybody marching in the street is anti-Christ and against Christians. No, I'm not saying everybody that marches in the street wants to burn Bibles. That's not at all what I'm saying. A lot of the people marching in the streets have a legitimate reason. They have a grievance. They want to get out and, and protest. That's fine. No problem with that. I'm talking about that crowd that wants to tear down everything you believe. They want to destroy this nation, but how do you do it? You do it by taking its foundation apart. And what is the foundation of this country? Our faith in the Lord God Almighty. That's the foundation of America, dear friend. Not in human ability. No, 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 no. The Almighty. So I love Him because He's faithful. I love Him because He supplies every need for my soul. Psalm 42 verse 2 says this. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Who said that, preacher? Somebody tell me who said that. David, the psalmist of Israel, the one who played the harp, the one who sat in the fields at night before the sheep, the one who comforted the sheep, he protected the sheep. He was the one that went to the valley of Elah and stood before Goliath and said, You come to me with a spear and a sword and a shield. I come to you in the name of the Lord God Almighty. Well, let me tell you something this morning. You can come before the church and you can move along as Laodicea does with intellect. You can move along with riches. You can move along by drawing, drawing a crowd and appealing to their flesh. But I come to you this morning in the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. My power is not my power. It is the power of the Holy Ghost of God. And it is this word. I will preach it till I drop dead. Amen. You got to get it settled. We got people today that are scared to death. They're afraid of their shadow. Folks, if I die, I die, but I believe in the Lord Jesus. Amen. I believe in Him. <laughs> I believe in Him. I know Him. When I talk about coming from a dunghill, I'm not kidding you. That's where I came from. So I love Him because He is thoughts for me. Psalm 139, verse 17. How precious also are their thoughts unto me, O God. Oh, how great is the sum of them. What do you mean by that? If God be for us, who can be against us? You can't cross that divine line. You can't breach that blood covenant. You can't do a thing to get around Calvary. I, I rest in the shadow of that cross. I'm protected by that blood. I'm sealed by the Holy Ghost of God. And you can't touch a hair on my head, nor many of them left, without the permission of Almighty God. These are the things that I know. It said, for which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded he's able to keep that which I've committed to him against that day. I know the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you know him. 
And I believe there are many of you in this house today that know him personally. No question. I'm not Elijah crawled up in some hole somewhere. He has reserved to himself thousands that have not bowed their knee to Baal or kissed his image. I know that. They love our Lord Jesus Christ to the death. No doubt about it. These are the things that I know. I know salvation is what you need if you don't know the Lord. He'll pull you up. You can't pull yourself up. Man's natural ability, man's natural inclination, not ability, but inclination, is to take hold of his bootstraps and pull himself up so he can brag about what he's done with his life. But I want to tell you something right now. You'll never pull yourself out of condemnation. And you'll never pull yourself out of the curse. You'll never pull yourself up to the presence of God. Who can ascend into heaven, the Bible said? Who can sit at the right hand of God? Who is able to do that? Just one. The Lord Jesus Christ. He hath ascended. Have you noticed what it says in Acts 1? When they gathered together in the last words the Lord Jesus Christ spoke. And then the scripture said, He ascended. Elijah didn't ascend. God sent a chariot for him. Enoch didn't ascend. God just changed him and took him out of here. But the Lord Jesus Christ rose from the curse of the earth. He rose through the atmosphere with the powers and, and all of the, the wickedness that covers this earth. He rose above it into the starry heavens, into the third heaven, into the very presence of God himself. And he approached to the throne of God. And he that has sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he walked in to that holy of holies, Lord God said, sit down at my right hand. He never called an angel God. He never called a seraphim God. But he did his son. This is that one that I have great love for today. I'm sick and tired of organized religion. That's Laodicea. You're right smack in the middle of it. I want somebody who really loves the Lord Jesus Christ. Not afraid to tell you. Amen. Thank God I know about the forgiveness of sins. Let me tell you something. I can't help you with your sins. But I can tell you about the one that can. I got enough of my own to worry about. And I come to him in grace and I come to him and I beat my chest and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And I mean it. It's not an act. It's not free fact. It rises from the soul from deep inside. Are you beginning to feel that way? Is something, is something getting a hold of your stone cold heart? How can I get this over to you? Something Is something starting to move within you? And you're starting to look about you and say, what a wasted life I've lived. And I put my trust in this. And, I, and, I, and all this doesn't mean anything to me anymore. Where's God? If you want to know, you'll find him. If you want to know the truth, you'll get it. That's what he's made us. Fellowship of the saints. That's what we're having in here today. What does 1 Corinthians say about God? It says this. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. God suffers long. How long have you been running from God? Listen to George Whitfield. He said, if one evil thought, if one evil word, if one evil action deserves eternal damnation, how many hells, my friends, do every one of us deserve whose whole lives have been one continued rebellion against God? In other words, 1 Corinthians, when it talks about the definition of love, is literally defining God's character. Love is kind. You know the story about the man on his way to Jericho? You know, the good Samaritan? That's kind. God's kind. God's kind to us. He's good to us. He, he bears up our wounds. He pours in the oil. He's gracious to us. That's God! Have you ever felt His kindness? Oh, He's a good God. He's kind. He envieth not. God wishes the best for you. He vaunteth not Himself. God does not force Himself on anyone. He won't make you believe anything. God will not force Himself on you. But He will make Himself graciously available if you simply believe. And not puffed up. God does not boast. Someone who is sovereign, absolute, almighty being like that, he didn't have to say a word. He could stop all creation in a moment of time. The cross says everything. John 15 verse 13 said, Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. The cross is a horrible thing. I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. It's horrible. You know, there's a lot of ways to die. Cardiac arrest is one of the best ways in the world to die. Heart just stops beating. You drop to the ground. No pain. You're gone. That's cardiac arrest. I know what I'm talking about. I've had it happen to me three or four times. But there's a lot of ways to die. And crucifixion is one of the worst. What does that mean, preacher? It means that I'm up here because I love you. He loves us. Do you love him? The Bible said perfect love casteth out fear. That word perfect is the Greek word telos. And you know what it means? It means matured, grown, complete. After years of knowing the Lord, your love should be greater, purer, 
more complete than it was when you got saved. If you know him, if you really know him, then it casteth out all fear and you desire to be with him.